Hello Reddit, Mr. Liquid Matter here. Um, I'm making this video because uh, some people are asking how did I get the Peltier cooler sandwiched inside of the uh, the processor and how did I wire it up with the power supply. So um, I'll do a brief rundown. I did some small scale testing. I uh, I run a lot of servers in my spare time, so I got a, a gajillion of these 100 watt and 200 watt power supplies. So what I did was um, in between the uh, this cooler 620, it's not their biggest model. Um, but uh, in between the cooler 620, I have a 3 millimeter 168 watt Peltier. They cost like $20. Uh, what I did first was I sandwiched it in between the cool the uh, the water block and the processor, and then had these two leads running out from the uh, the cooling unit. And obviously, polarity is important with Peltier cooling. So had the polarity set up correct with uh, just one of these crappy little 100 watt power supplies. And um, yeah, no, I was watching idle temps around 17 degrees, and that was only at 100 watts. It's 168 watt Peltier. So then I, uh, I grabbed one of my other spare PC power supplies. This is a 650, I think, and uh, that uh, that was able to push the Peltier to the full 168 watts that it can utilize. And I was able to idle at nine. If I leave my computer running overnight and I come back, it'll idle at seven degrees Celsius. So, um, yeah, so I got this 850 in my computer. I got a GTX 680 sucking up most of the juice, but uh, what I did was I, uh, let me see if I'll show you this because a lot of people don't know this. All right, so on your power supply, you usually have numbers like this. Come on, focus, dear God. There we go. All right, so the 12 volt positive 70 amp. Okay, this is, uh, this is the yellow line right here. Come on, focus. This is the yellow line right here. Okay, this is the 12 volt positive. It can offer all the yellow you see, all the yellow wires you see, that uh, it's a total, they can offer 70 amps. So that's a total of 840 watts. And uh, most of it, as I said, you can see on there, the most big graphics cards these days have two ports on them because they just suck up all the juice. But uh, yeah, so what I did was I really quickly, I made a small adapter and uh, the color of the leads are incorrect. So I actually had to reverse one of them. You'll see that the yellow goes to the black on there. See that? So anyway, I actually had to reverse two leads. They're easy to pop out, flopped it over. And then, um, as I said, the Peltier, 20 bucks. It's about three millimeters thick. Um, it's square underneath the uh, the liquid cooler. And then um, I wouldn't recommend buying this one. Get something with a larger bracket because I actually had to bend the bracket a little bit. <sighs> Sorry about the focusing. I actually had to bend the bracket a little bit to get it to fit right there and uh, it's just because the back brace it's just it's too far away so it's on there it works this this cooler works I just I would recommend maybe one with longer screws um, before and this is a 3770k underneath this uh, this cooler here so before the radiator would put out like no heat like nothing would come off of this now with that Peltier on there I mean it is just sucking the heat right off the processor and making it cooler than room temperature so we got this uh, I mean, this is quite toasty here. I wish you guys could put your hands in front of this. This is uh, definitely a nice warm summer day. Just put my hand behind here and put my hand on the bottom. You could definitely feel a significant increase in temperature on that on the bottom of that radiator there. But uh, yeah, no, it's it's really simple. If you have a power supply that uh, you got a little extra juice you could run around with. I got an 850. This is a GTX 680. I think they need a minimum of 550 to boot. So I got some extra juice and... Um, I was like, why not? So I slapped, I've had this thing forever, I slapped it in there and I did some small, small scale testing with just some external power supplies. As long as you can keep on eye on your temperatures, you know, these processors have a safety catch where it'll kill itself if it gets too hot. So it's okay to fumble around with, don't be too terrified of it unless your processor is, you know, an older model. But other than that, it's a really easy setup. I recommend it. Um, I may upload a video here soon of some small scale, you know, uh, overclocking, some more benchmarking, things like that. But uh, if you're looking forward to get idle temperatures, you know, this thing, you'll boot the computer, it'll start at 20, 27, 28 degrees Celsius, depending on what room temperature is, and it will bring it down to 9, almost 2 minutes. And it will just idle at 9, you'll really never go past 12. Again, we'll do some benchmarking, we'll show you guys, but uh, yeah, if it's, think, if it's a project you think you want to take on, I would say do it. So, yeah, thanks for watching.